Okay, so we have a problem that tells us that the transformation T takes the matrix, or the vector, from R4 into R3. And it says that T is a linear transformation, and it's given by this right here, where T of x1, x2, x3, x4, the vector, uh, is transferred into this matrix, or this system of equations that's written in a matrix here. And so it asks what's the range of T. So to find the range of T, we have to find the matrix A represent, that represents the transformation T, and take that and row reduce it, not to uh, reduce row echelon form, just to row echelon form, so we can find the pivotal columns, because those pivotal columns will tell us the range of the matrices, because the range is a subset of R3, because that's what we're transforming the matrix into. So to, to get this matrix here, the matrix A, we're just going to pull off the coefficients of these, so you're going to have 4, 1, negative 2, negative 3, 2, 1, 1, negative 4, 6, 0, negative 9, 9. And then we have to row reduce this. So the first thing we're going to do, 1 fourth of row 1, just take that over. And just keep the rest of the matrix the same. And then we need to get the next two the next two columns to get rid of these, turn them into zeros. So we're going to take R2 and subtract 2, row 1. We're going to take R3 and subtract 6, row 1. So just keep the first column the way it was. And then... That's zero, because that's what we're trying to do. And then you have one minus one half, which leaves you with one half. You have one plus one, because one minus a negative one. And so that's going to be two. And then you have a negative four plus a negative two times negative three to four. So you're going to have all of that comes out to be negative five halves. And then in the next row, again, you're going to have zero because that's what we're trying for. And then you're going to have negative 6 over 4, which is reduces to negative 3 over 2. And then negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. And then 6 times 3 is 18. And 9 plus 18 over 4 is 27 over 2. And now we need to get this, get a leading one in this um, column. So we're going to multiply row 2 by 2. Gonna take this down to the next row. You're going to say, keep the first column the same. Zero, one, four. 5, third column stays the same with this operation, and now we need to get rid of this because we're trying to put it and reduce our, our just regular row echelon form, so we're going to add, we're going to take R3 and add 3 halves of R2, this transformation again, top column stays the same, Second column also stays the same. Third column, zero, zero, that's what we're trying for. Uh, and works out nicely to where this also comes out to zero. And then all of that comes out to be six. And so all we have to do now to get it into row echelon form is say one six of R3, just for the sake of illustrating that it is indeed in Marechalon form, even though that might be obvious. And so this is the row reduced form of our matrix A. And so from this, we can see we have three pivotal ones, which means that there are, of course, three pivotal columns 
And since there are three pivotal columns, when um, the range is some subset of R3, that means that the range covers all of R3, speaking geometrically. And then we can also represent this with a set of vector equations, where we have the variables x1, x2, and x3 that are all within the domain of all real numbers. And so we will write the vector b, which is some linearly dependent vector of the three vectors that we just found to be pivotal, where you have some multiple of the vector 1, 0, 0, plus some multiple of the vector 1, 4, 1, 0, where I'm just pulling these pivotal columns and making them vectors because they're linearly independent because they are pivotal. And x3 times negative 3 over 4, negative 5, and 1. And that is the vector equation that represents the vector b.